I'd like to now cover the posterior muscles of the thigh. To give you an orientation, we're looking at the anterior aspect of the thigh. Here's our landmark, the rectus femoris. I'm going to turn the leg so that we can see the lateral aspect of the thigh. We see the tensor fascia lata with the iliotibial band or tract. I'm going to now rotate the thigh model so that you can see the posterior aspect of the thigh. Again, this is the lateral side. And I'm going to first start with the gluteus maximus. The gluteus maximus has its origin on the ilium, sacrum, and coccyx. Its insertion is on the gluteal tuberosity of the femur, and its action is it's the major extensor of the thigh. Above it is the gluteus medius. The gluteus medius has its origin on the ilium, and its insertion is on the greater trochanter of the femur. Its action is abduction and medial thigh rotation. Moving inferiorly, we can see the muscles of the hamstrings. I'd like to show you the two medial muscles of the hamstring groups. There is one on top of the other. The one on top is the semitendinosus. Its origin is the ischial tuberosity and it inserts on the medial aspect of the proximal tibia. Its action is to extend the thigh and flex the knee. Deep to the uh, semitendinosus is the semimembranosus. You can see it peeking out from underneath the semitendinosus here as well as here. The origin of the semimembranosus is the ischial tuberosity. Its insertion is the medial condyle of the tibia and its action is extension of the thigh and flexion of the knee. The last of the hamstring group is this large muscle that's on the lateral aspect of the thigh and this muscle is the biceps femoris. The origin of the biceps femoris is the ischial tuberosity and femur. Its insertion is the fibula and tibia and its action is extension of the thigh and flexion of the knee.